Chaos Cosmos here, aka Dean, reverse it up. Um, this is my first video on um, my Illustrials journey, and uh, I guess I wanted to highlight something that from a casual and a Kickstarter backer that's never really played the game yet. Um, the Illustriac season two specifically. Um, I'm gonna cover them week by week and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna just pick out some plays that I found really interesting and I think other people might find interesting. Uh, the Illustriate as a whole this season has been absolutely amazing and I think it's really, really highlighted the game um, and I think it, it will allow people to come in and see the different levels of competitive play, there's casual play, there's people in there that are new to the game and yeah, as a casual, it's been really fun to watch, and I just wanted to pick out and highlight some plays. Um, this is not to take away from any of the games in the week. Um, I could probably highlight all of them and talk about moments from each of them, but I'm just going to pick out some plays that I found really cool and interesting and stuff, I think, that highlights parts of the game that, for me as a casual, really I really enjoy. So we're going to start with week one. Um, we're going to aim for about three games and talk about stuff inside it i'm not going to keep the i'm not going to have the videos being too long i'm going to keep them quite short um short snappy and i'm just going to talk about it briefly this is not a, a competitive breakdown i don't i don't know enough or i have not played enough to be that kind of judge character um i just yeah i just want to highlight some things i enjoy so i hope you enjoy it too and uh, let's get into game one so this is game one it's actually game one of week one. Um, I'm gonna try and keep it as spoiler free as possible. I will probably um, mention some things here and there. I'll try and forewarn people. Um, I highly recommend going checking out the entire playlist. I'll keep it linked in the videos below when I post them. Um, but there's gonna be some spoilers uh, for season one here. Um, so if you haven't watched that, go check it out. Come back here, watch the video. Um, but yeah, that's just this is your this is your warning. So this is actually between last year's winner and Swolex of the Electronauts. Um, I have to apologise. I'm blocking his face entirely. Swolex that is. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a really nice game to start off with. Last year's winner um, coming in cross four set two. Um, yeah, and I guess. I'm going to start here because as you can see there's an ash rabbit on the board and uh you'll see a lot of ash rabbit in the illustriad and if you play the game at all um it's a very good card to attack five defense allows you to look at the top three cards of your deck uh, and pick one and put the others back in the shuffle um, without revealing a very powerful tool uh, for gaining hand advantage and in general it's a good body hard to get over um, from a lot of illustrious but yeah i'm just going to highlight this play um and it's a play that's going to get used quite a lot throughout the season i think it's a really cool display of the mechanics of the game pretty quickly so, so as you can see he plays circle of the sky here um circle of the sky allows you to nexus up to two nexus is a mechanic um and it allows him to move the spirit from another card on the board um two is ash rabbit and what this means is it actually re-triggers the ash rabbit's effect so not only do you draw from circle of the sky you also get to re-trigger the ash rabbit effect do the look at the top three add a card to your hand you know two two cards for almost no no cost here and it's like such a big advantage and i just want to for people that don't understand, uh, or people that don't understand, I highly recommend you go check out the rules of the game. But Nexus in is essentially an effect which allows you to move spirits around the board from one target to another up to the amount it says, um, and it activates the effect. Um, there are electrals with this, there are runes with this. Um, again, I'm not here to sit and explain for all the rules. Uh, they have a very good video for that. I can link that below as well if people want to check that out. Um, but as you can see, um, I just I just wanted to highlight. It's a very simple turn, but a very powerful one. And it, it allows them to gain two cards into hand, um, gaining a massive advantage, um, all while, you know, costing him very little spirits. 
and spirits is life in this game uh, so it's a resource that's very important um you lose it you lose right um but yeah i mean you can see from the discipline there that was a quick turnaround with laurels because of the amount of spirits that we put on board um, and the board is essentially in a fresh state um but yeah so i guess this is what i wanted to highlight from game one and it was the power of using the resources available to you to gain advantage um for as little cost as possible um, by using the spirits on board and maneuvering them around and re-triggering effects like Ash Rabbit's effect. So this guy really really want to highlight the game one and I think it's a good example of, of what to expect from the entire Lesh Red where you'll see people uh, some new players as well which I think is really cool learning these kind of mechanics and really pushing their boundaries um, and so some plays later in the season that uh, yeah that are really really cool about manipulating spirits on board knowing their opponent's decks and strategies as this goes along um as i said maybe i should explain how the electronic format works but um essentially it's two teams of people and they're fighting it out uh weekly seven games a week over seven weeks and the uh, team with the highest advantage will go through to the the top cut stages essentially the knockout stages and they'll play each other so if one team wins they'll end up playing each other um yeah so, so it's a pretty cool format i really like it over those weeks they open more and more packs and it enables them to build decks they all started off with an element and a base set um so yeah like if you want to see that there's a there's an instruction video as well at the start of the playlist it's really good go, go check it out and find it um but yeah that'll be it from game one i said i'm going to keep these short and sweet this was more about highlighting a mechanic of the game that enables you to gain advantage and i think it's really cool highlight and quite a simple one to show off how powerful even small plays can be um yeah check out this uh, game one this is going on to game two right on to game two which is actually game three of the investor uh week one um for me this is the highlight of week one this whole game is amazing in my opinion um from start to finish i think it really highlights um the power of this kind of format this format you're opening and you're building from a from a base and up um Wurtz versus match a Wurtz is known for his off meta decks is an, an Alessio's favorite but uh yeah it, it, it's just look at this board state right here um three back row against one back row and six Alessio's on board uh there's a stadium room um and I guess I just really wanted to highlight that this game really shows how Elestrals can be played um, against two cards. This is a great back and forth. There's so many good plays. And I'm just going to like let it play for a little bit as we uh, reveal the Gorg Gorgon's Gaze. Um, the strongest, if not one of the best cards in the game. Essentially, it suppresses, stops attack, stops ascension. Um, and here he essentially shuts off the effect of galaxy which is switching all of the water electrals on the board's attack and defense um stops his own electrical being destroyed but the foamy's effect triggers but yeah this game is more about navigating an early state in his electrical he had um he works board spirits from its field to play the gorgon's gaze um which you can do it's save your new resources again it's such a such a powerful thing utilizing those spirits on board where you can to make sure that you don't kill yourself essentially or enable not enable yourself to cast something that's going to save you later on or push for game and the foamy allows you to float into another electoral um you slow it to the sluggle which is healing again bringing your resources back water is very good at managing those resources and bringing them back and keep returning them so laura's again and it's just popping stuff off the board and you can see how quickly the back and forth goes. Uh, the swing come in, the Gorgon's Gaze come out to stop the thing, to blow the foamy up. Still has three electrons on board, but the Loras comes out. You know, you're utilizing your spirits on here. And I just, this this whole game is worth checking out. Start to finish. I'm not gonna, I wish I could sit here and show you the whole game, but I think it's highly worth you going to check out yourself. Um, don't want to reveal the winners. Um, that would be. That would be uh, not fun of me, I'd say. I think it's well worth going checking out to see who wins this clash. 
but I really just wanted to bring highlight to this game and show the power of the board state, how quickly it can all switch around. There were six Alessias on the field, there was four back row total, we're now sitting at three Alessias, two on one, one on the other side, one back row. There's a Volcaries with two spirits on it and it's, there you go, it's a clean board and it's just like in a matter of minute, even less, the whole board state switched and it's a great back and forth. And, you know, so I, I just wanted to highlight, again, the power of how you utilize your spirits and how you manage them um, to make sure that you uh, you give yourself the best opportunity to um, succeed. And like I said, this game's great. I just not highly recommend it for this game to watch. If you're going to pick any of the games, this will really show you how the game should be, be played or could be played there's a lot of back and forth there's a lot of clever plays and it's only week one and it's nice to see and it's really encouraging as a like as a casual who really wants to start playing the game i've been back as a kickstarter um never really had much chance to sit down and get playing which i'm hoping to do soon especially with trying to kickstart this um, so yeah i said go check out game three of week one it's very 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 good so it's game three of week one which is actually game seven um and this game, I think, is about highlighting the beauty of something like the Elestria ad, which will enables people to build decks a bit more creatively or funly. Um, and in this game, you see Caleb using some lesser used Elestrials, Elestrials that are not really seen as much, even in casual play, um, like uh, the capital sitting on the board there. Um, it's a two Gospel Elestral uh, from base set. Um, when you swing over and destroy an Elestral, you can summon a one plus water electrical to the field um and yeah it's just highlighting again it's a strong board state um the pressure from cards even even unknown cards in this one can really put the pressure on and i'm just gonna play the video because caleb plays out another electrical that's uh rarely used in this it's called cerebral um which enables you to see you know, all of the face down runes of your opponent and if any of them are non-counter runes they immediately get destroyed um Cool thing about this card, and it's it's interesting because I feel like it's a little bit underused. It doesn't really have as much use right now, but gives you gives you knowledge, gives you knowledge even if it doesn't show anything, so you know what you're swinging into. And yeah, Caleb has a commanding board state here. Um, anyway, when he plays this, which probably gives him the ability to do something like that, it's less risky. Like playing this card without popping anything. I mean, yeah, you get the knowledge, but you don't really advance your board state too much. Cerebral's stats aren't great and at times and uh, doesn't really enable you to push too hard. But I think I just wanted to highlight the fact that like, you know, this game does enable you to use cards like this. Um, it enables you to use cards that are not necessarily considered meta and it still enables you to win using like Capricorn and Cerebral and it's like, you know, it's, it's all assisting him in winning the game, but it's just building fun. And enjoying yourself so a drive there um, popping up um a little spoiler reroll but yeah so it just just enables you to build fun and enjoy yourself using cards that you might not use and test them out and see how it is and float into your phone this is week one so they don't really know what each other are bringing or what they what they're building or what they're pulling but yeah so i thought this was a really good highlight of the game in week one it showed off some of the mechanics it showed um, the presence and the ability to experience on board to have back and forth and switch the game up and then the last game highlighting that you can, you can use those unused Elestrals um, and cards and, st and still make an impact and big dominant pressure on the game um, yeah so this, uh, that's it that's what I really want to say for week one I'm going to continue to do this for week two and beyond um, yeah so I, I hope you found this interesting and uh, I will continue to do it but please let me know what I can do to to better this, to, to increase it. Because I'd like to keep doing it and I'd like to keep highlighting these games with me Leicester had and talk about the scene a bit more. Um, I find it really interesting and it's I find it really um, encouraging for people like me who, like, especially over here in the UK, um, they haven't sorted out the shipping yet, distribution yet, which they're working hard to do. But it means that, you know, it's harder for me to get the cards and it's harder, it costs me more in some cases than a lot of other people and you know I, I just want to enjoy the game as well i want to collect it i want to start playing it um i'm going to try and enable myself to join in the weekly tournaments and stuff like that 
and these intros and outros are a bit longer for this video because it's the first one but yeah i'd like to um hear your thoughts and opinions on how i can make this better do you want to hear the, the audio for example when i play the things and then i'll talk over it afterwards and like let it flavor a little bit yeah i wasn't really sure if it's best for me to just talk over the this, this silent games of the lesser and that and like i said i'm not going to try to give anything away please do go check out the actual playlist of the lesser it's been phenomenal um yeah i've been chaos cosmos um yeah thank you